Hey everybody, I'm George Buman of the Yellowstone Life, and thanks so much for joining me for our brand new video series entitled Wild Conversations. This happens every week at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and we're going to be talking about all sorts of things that pertain to animal behavior, language, and Yellowstone ecology, and general Yellowstone National Park information. It's a real treat, and this first episode is, is really highlighting uh, the importance of listening to animals. Why should we even listen to animals and pay attention to animals? And I'll tell you from my own personal perspective, it is just absolutely integral to not only my regular life, but my livelihood too as an instructor, a teacher, a guide, um, but also as an artist. A lot of my artwork uh, really depends on getting down to the, to the basics of what makes animals do what they do and what are the outward signals that they show that tell us those things. So the simple position of ears or the look or the smell of an animal is something that we overlook a lot of times. And in reality, it, it can convey a lot of information and once we start to tap into that information, it can give us a lot of satisfaction and joy uh, of being in their company, but also it really connects us to uh, the place we are, whether it's right at home, whether it's somewhere you're traveling here in Yellowstone National Park. So I want to start off by just saying um, we ignore a lot. In, in not only just in the wildlife realm, but we miss a lot of things in, in daily life that um, would share a lot of information with us and a great example was yesterday I happened to be out with a friend and uh, while he was doing something I was sitting up above this trail in the broad open there were no trees it was it was completely in the clear open and there was a, a semi used trail that people jog and walk and this woman came right down the trail um, and she was jogging with her dog and the dog multiple times stopped and <laughs> turned around and even came to the end of the leash and, and looked at me. And she just kept right on running. And, you know, whether it's a domestic animal or a wild one, the simple acts that they engage in tell us a great deal about what's happening in their environment or our shared environment. And so um, on one level, they can see things that we can't see. They can hear things we can't hear. And they're in places that we aren't, you know. How many of you can fly? <laughs> Very few of us, uh, unless you have your pilot's license. And even then, it's a, it's a vastly different experience, I'm sure, from flying um, the way a raven might or an eagle. And so we need to use them better. We need to see the world through their eyes. So, you know, their lives depend on this stuff. Um, our ancestors, if you go back at some point in history, they did too. But we have the luxury as modern humans that we don't pay attention to things in the way that we used to, you know, as a species. And still to this day, you know, most of us, it doesn't matter whether we hear that bird say that one particular call or not. It, we aren't going to die <laughs> and not make it to breakfast because of that. Um, but earlier in history, things like that actually happened. So in our modern age, the, the animal um, awareness is much more about being a part of the landscape and the place you are at that very moment again you know i was standing on the deck here the other day and um, this small bird choof, went flying right past me and into this actual patch of trees that i'm standing in right now um, the chickadees could be calling or a woodpecker could be pecking on a, um, a, a telephone pole or a power pole or a tree and how often do we blow that stuff off? We just completely walk by, we ignore it, like we do so many human-related sounds, noise. But it's not noise. Think of it from this perspective. It's communication. They're sharing information about their world, and we can know what they know simply by looking and listening. You could use the analogy of a, a riverbed. 
you know, as you're watching the river, the water flowing through that riverbed, it's relatively flat, you know, if it's a still river. But there are definitely places when you look closer at the surface where there are eddies and riffles and all sorts of different relief structures that might be really subtle, but they point to very profound meanings down under the surface of that water. So you can tell if you study water. Uh, fishermen know this pretty well where the deep water is, where the shallow water is, where there might be a big boulder hidden beneath the surface or a sandbar, or, uh, those sorts of things. Those same subtleties are happening out here in the natural environment. So that sparrow I talked about that flew right past me so quick, animals just don't do that. The margin between life and death for them uh, is so thin that they, didn't, they can't afford to waste energy. So flying really fast and really directed without being aware of your surroundings um, is not a safe thing to do. It, cause, it requires a lot of energy, first off, but it may expose you to some other danger in a place you're going that you haven't really assessed yet. So what that sparrow actually told me was, I think it was a sparrow, I didn't even know, and that's one of the things too, is you just don't have to know all the speed. You don't have to be a birder. You don't have to be a, a complete nature nut. You just have to tune in. And what that bird told me when I tuned in was that George and our pup Hobbs were coming back from their walk. That bird saw them coming down the driveway, leapt out of the relative open area that it was probably feeding, and it shot right into the cover of the forest. You know, just again, think of how often we ignore something that simple or the woodpecker pecking ask yourself, does it do it all day long? Well, no, I'm actually listening right now and I'm not hearing any of that. So there are patterns that unfold there and those patterns are able to clue us into things that we might really want to see. They might help us, you know, if your cat gets out or your dog is off leash, the signals in the environment will tell you exactly where they are and what's going on. Maybe, maybe even down to the level of your cat, whether it's sunning and reclining in the, in the morning light or whether it's actually on the hunt. You know, it can be really specific. And so the more we tune into it, the more we can get that information, one, the more we enjoy our surroundings by knowing what these different things mean, we get to see stuff that we normally wouldn't. You know, so many things we, we miss literally right outside of our own front door. There's a great video online of this older couple who had a, um, a security camera outside of their, what appeared to be a suburban well-to-do neighborhood. And right before they came out of the door, the black bear walks up onto their porch and is literally right within feet of the door as the couple walks out of the door and goes on their way, even lingering a little bit around the exit, you know, locking the door and things. And the bear simply slinks off, you know, close to one of the columns near the door, but is in plain view. Um, we're doing that all the time. Um, and, and the point here is to start breaking down some of those walls that we create and, and get out of our own heads. We'll find a lot of calm, a lot of, um, connectedness, a lot of joy, just by starting to notice the things right close by. So we listen to animals for our health, we listen for knowledge, we listen and look at them to feel like we're a part of the place that we live again. You know, your yard, your town park, your closest national park, all of these places have so much going on that it simply takes paying a little bit more attention, setting aside our own agendas and to-do lists and things like that. You'll get a lot more out of this, I guarantee. It makes it a lot more fun. That feeds into my artwork. It makes my everyday a heck of a lot worth, more <laughs> worth living when you, you just feel like you're, you're one of the, the genuine community, the full community of life. So we're going to spend a lot more time on these sorts of subjects, animal communication, behavior, Yellowstone, um, 
updates as far as the seasons go and and things like that each Thursday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I also really encourage you to log on to a yellowstonelife.com and you can download our free guide to the five things that you can do right now to tune into animal language. And that'll get you a little bit further ahead in terms of what to look for, what to listen for, and how to go about your days, even in a slightly different manner than you usually do, but you're gonna get a lot more out of them. For me, it helps with the art, it helps with um, feeling calm and collected when I have to go settle into work and other things that might be stressful. You're able to handle them a lot better when you harness the power of, of the natural world around you. So pay attention to animals. They'll teach you a lot and I look forward to seeing you next Thursday, 5 p.m. Take care and listen to animals.